Now, I will actually take this opportunity, like I did with Mitsu just now, to say, like, yeah, it took me ages to draw this volume well, but drawing it well is a critical skill. Like, seeing what the volume is, it's worth investing the time to draw your diagram properly so you don't screw it up, so you understand it well, and you can form the integrals properly. Like, no kidding when they say a picture says a thousand words, this very clearly demonstrates what's going on, and I'm gonna draw some, I'm gonna make some arguments off the basis of this diagram, so it better be good enough. Okay? So in a test, would they draw it for you? Um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. It depends, it depends on the difficulty of the volume that you get, okay. um, and also like whether they're trying, like what are they trying to assess? Basically, right? Um, as, I, as I've explained, what kind of understanding? As I've explained um, before, as you go further, the volumes get more difficult. And so, you know, you will often get given a drawing. Just, there you go, you get given the, given the thing. Okay? Now, I've actually gone a little bit further than um, what a typical question would do. Um, this is the reason why I've highlighted this in green. Uh, a common way that you would see this is they will give you this function, they'll give you the straight line. Uh, sorry, the parabola, they'll give you the straight line, and then they'll shade this thing in, and they say, that area, the part shaded in green, that's all we give you, and they tell you what axis that you're rotating around, okay? And then you have to say, well, okay, it's up to you whether you want to draw a decent diagram or not, then you've got to form the integrals and evaluate. And you can see, just by looking at this, right, that there's going to be this cavernous hole in the middle. Now, this diagram is very busy. I actually think it's worth having invested really well to make this a good, big diagram, with colors and everything, okay? Off on the side here, as a small version, I'm going to draw another version of this, but with less information on it, so that I can just see the volume. So if you want to imagine, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this, I'm actually looking at it from this angle, like literally where I'm standing, so that I can see, I'll call this the top, I can call it whatever I like. Um, I'm seeing this part, and these parts in here are hidden from my view, right? Does that make sense? That's why I've drawn them as dotted, okay? So if I'm maybe doing that again in a smaller version up here, I've got the top there, right? The outsides are kind of like a bowl, right? Kind of like a bowl, they're tapering in, in this curved way, like this. That's curved, okay? Then you've got the bottom. But then there's a slice, uh, a chunk that's been cut out from the middle, okay? So you can see here, it's sort of this inner ring like that. Again, it's something that's hidden from your view. And those edges on the inside are straight. So this is the actual volume that we're dealing with. Okay. Now, um, just to help you, and you'll see this word um, referred to later on, that part that I've cut out from the middle, right? Can you see because it's got straight edges, right? If I were to continue that all the way, you'd get a cone, wouldn't you? If I if I went until those two opposite sides met, okay? Now, because it's basically like a cone, but I've sliced off the top, right? It gets a new name. Um, this thing, the inside shape, is called a frustrum. Okay, so you might see that word. They won't expect you to know what it means, like just by saying, "Oh, it's a frustrum." That's very, very unlikely. If they said that word, they would almost certainly provide you a diagram, like I have. But you might as well know what it is because, well, it's not that complicated it's to work out. Frustrating. That's <laughs> so basically, it's a cone with a smaller cone cut off the top. If that makes sense. So how do I determine this volume, okay? Um, I've got a big volume, which I can work out from the parabola, right? And I call that, because it's the bigger one, I call it the outer volume, right? So I'm gonna say outer volume equals. Now, I haven't provided you boundaries yet, so just because of the functions that I've chosen, um, I think the values I wanted were, yeah, I'm gonna call this one five, and this one 15, my scale's not, most fantastic, but hopefully the rest of the diagram makes up for that, okay? So be it those are my x boundaries, and I'm rotating around the x axis, I can say that the outer volume is the integral from five to 15 of what? This is the outer volume now, right? X. Pi first, and then it's going to be y squared dx, right? Which, because y is the square root of x, y squared is just x, x right? So perfect. There you go, no problems, right? Now this is fine to integrate. I will do this in a second, okay? But then I want to point out, once we finish this off, we get a number at the end, yeah? But that's not the actual volume I want. I've got to take, I've got to cut this slice out, right? This big chunk. So because it's on the inside, I call that the inner volume. 
Okay? Now, the inner volume shares the same boundaries. It is still from 5 to 15, right? But it's of a completely different function, right? So this is what I've got here, and I need to evaluate that um, as, that's y, so I need y squared, right? So I've got pi times that, Squared. There's my y squared. Are you happy with that? With respect to x. Okay. Now, what's going to ensue after this is honestly just a bit of monkey work, and I'm going to let you do that without me, without having to watch this, because you can do it yourself probably quicker than I can. Um, but you can see that to get the actual volume, I've got the big one, I've got the small one. Once I've got both of them, I just take the difference. That's all I need to do. Right? So I'm going to give you a minute or two to actually just do the arithmetic first, evaluate your integrals, uh, take out whatever constants are suitable to make this easy for yourself, and then we'll come back together when we're combining the results at the end. Okay? So you do that, I'm going to do it on the board, but you don't so need to watch can you do like it. Can you like minus it down? Ah, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. For now, treat them as separate for me, okay? because I'm actually going to draw a particular point out of that. Uh, do the volume separately, and then subtract. We'll come back together in a minute. Let's draw the threads back together and um, point out a couple of things, right? Uh, like I said, um, this one's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, you'll notice I pulled up that two as, saw as, as soon as I saw it in the primitive because I'm like, well, I can do it once out the front, or I can do it twice. I prefer to do it once. Um, over here, you can see I could have expanded this guy, but it's simple enough that I can just say, well, I'm just going to be raising up a power and dividing by that power. The chain rule, the reverse chain rule, is exceedingly simple because x doesn't have a coefficient on it, so that derivative would just be 1, doesn't have an effect, okay? And you can quickly test this, like if you differentiate that, sure enough, okay? Uh, in the same way, I took this 3, bore it out the front, which is how that 300 came about, and then I'm pretty sure I evaluated that, okay? Now, this all came together in this line. You'll notice, by the way, um, in previous questions where it's like, oh, I've got this volume and that volume, uh, I would have said total volume, but I'm not actually adding things up. I'm taking a difference. So that's why I say, actually, I mean, you can say whatever you like. You can just say volume, full stop, if you want. So long as you distinguish what's going on. You've got three different quantities going on here. So don't confuse them. One, take away the other, you simplify, ta-da. Okay? Now, the question was raised earlier, and it's actually part of why I'm drawing this out in this particular way. Well, hold on a second. When we were doing, like if the question I posed to you was, tell me what the green area is. Just work out the green area, forget about the volume for a second, okay? The way to work out the green area is to say, this is an area between two curves, right? So you would say the area is, we talked about upper function and lower function, right? So you'd go this guy, take away that guy between the boundaries. So you'd go five to 15 of, let's have a look, uh, square root of x, take away one tenth, blah, 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 blah. That would give you the green area, thumbs up, okay? It's not unreasonable to think, okay, well, if I'm just taking that area and then rotating it around, can't I just take this guy, right, and do the pi r squared h, right? Can I not do that, right? Would this volume, right, rather than going through this separate way, could I treat this as a single volume with the pi and the r, blah, 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 I should have picked a simple one, squared, and the h. Now, the answer is no. I want you to think for a second with me as to why the answer is no. Okay? Um, the first, I just want you to be content with the fact that how did, how did we come about with this volume, this volume, and then subtract? Uh, what, how did we argue that? Do you agree with it? Do you agree that I went about it in the right way? Like there's a big volume, I cut a hole out of it, right? So I work out the big one, I work out the hole, and then I subtract. That works, right? You, you're content with that, yeah? Is it because you're calculating like the cylinders inside? So if you try and cut like a bigger cylinder and then a smaller cylinder, like you don't actually get, like I don't know how to explain it, but it's not yeah, yeah. right. You're on the right track. You're, on, you're very much on the right track. Think about what you get here, right? And if I take out one slice, in fact, let's just have a look at this top slice here, because I've kind of already drawn it, right? If I just give it a tiny, infinitesimally thin width here, yeah. okay? The area of this little slice that we're taking out, right, is not a cylinder, okay? In fact, it's the difference between two cylinders. Now, if I were to do this, right, this part here, what this does is it takes one radius, the root x radius, that's this one, right? Uh, sorry, that radius there. 
and takes the other one and it puts them together, right? So when you calculate this, what you're going to get is a cylinder, okay? Just one cylinder. Um, you're not going to get this sort of, um, it's like a washer, right? Like with a hole in the middle, okay? Now algebraically, I can prove this for you very simply. This is what I've done, and I'm actually going to ask you to put this over the top of this, maybe in like big colourful sort of um, letters in a box. When you're working out a volume and you're doing the differences, okay? You have to go the integral, right? From whatever boundaries you choose. You got the pi in there, okay? But what this amounts to, if you do want to put it together as one integral, is there's a big radius that gets squared, and then there's a little radius that gets squared, okay? There's the big one, there's the little one. You can combine those and there's your dx, what you're different integrating with respect to. Okay? Now that is fine. Now this is saying something quite different, right? Do you see the subtle difference? What this is saying, I put it in my, in my danger gun, okay, is not that. Rather it's trying to say this, a, b, pi, and then it brings the radii together like this. Okay? Now these are not the same, right? Once I get all the algebra out of the way, you can see that these are different. In fact, if I would evaluate this, right? See this y minus y squared? It's going to become y squared minus 2yy plus the other y squared. This is totally different. You don't end up subtracting this volume at all, and you get this weirder guy in the middle, just like, what is that? Okay? This is not the volume. This is something dramatically different. So just clarify, the one up there, um, yep. because of properties of integrals, you can just break it back to 2. So it's exactly the same as the Correct, that's right. So what I've done is, this is the correct way, the accurate way, to contract these two integrals together, right? This one has been squared, that's why it's an x, not a square root of x. This one has been squared, and then I can combine them like so, right? They've already been squared, as opposed to combining them first and then squaring later, which gives you a completely different volume altogether, okay? So, watch out, right? This is the way we do areas, but it's not the way we do volumes. Okay? It doesn't work when you do, and that's why I said it's differences between volumes. Work out the volumes first, one, two, and then take the difference. Okay? Easy trap to fall into. Make sense?